This quick video will show how to sign up and use Flipgrid, which is video formative assessment. In the past, you might have even used Let's Recap, which that's changing in January, so this might be a really good alternative for you. So the first thing you're going to do is go to flipgrid.com and then educator login. I like to just log in using my Google account. After you're logged in, you can see that I've got several classes set up here. It is now completely free to create as many classes as you want, which makes it great when you have multiple periods in the day. So a grid is like a class. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new grid. The grid type, you can read that there's several different options here. Um, I like to choose school email domain, especially for middle school or high school, so that students simply log in with their Google account. So I'll go ahead and create one for maybe my third period. You can see it provides a specific link for this class that you could place in Moodle or in Google Classroom. And then this is just going to be the header or the image for your class. So you could upload one or just choose a preset. And then you're going to type in our domain, which is at nisdtx.org, showing that that's what students are going to type in for their email. And launch my grid. Okay. So you can see here, when I go to my grids, I have several periods set up, and then a grid is a class. So then the code for each individual class can be found here. I'll go ahead and click on third period. A topic is going to be like a question or assignment that you ask your class. So we click on new topic. You can see that there's lots of settings, but we're just going to look at the basics here. So maybe we want students to, in Spanish class, um, record a conversation in Spanish. So um, you're going to give this a title. Flipgrid can be used for so many different things. You could have students um, talk about something from a different point of view. You could have them respond to a simple like opening question or maybe reflect on their learning for the day. So a lot of different ways to um, use Flipgrid. Okay. This optional, you could add a little tip here. And then one of my favorites is that you get to choose how much time the students have for their quick video. Um, this is even great for students who are writing and have trouble getting thoughts on paper. Maybe they're going to go ahead and do their flip grid before the write. That way they know, oh, I can answer. Um, but they just have trouble getting those thoughts out. So they answer, and then maybe it's easier to put it on paper. Um, you could have students keep it brief, or you could give them a little bit longer. So we'll go for a minute right now. If you want to leave them any kind of description, um, I'm just going to put testing here, but this is a great way to put maybe sentence stems or things that you want them to think about. Okay, um, video moderation. This means that you have to approve them before they become visible to their classmates. You can turn that on or off. Okay, um, active. So I'm going to say, yes, I want this to be active, and you can choose a launch and freeze date. So when do you want it to open? When do you want it to close? One of my favorite options is this topic resource. Notice that this is optional, um, but as a teacher, if you want to record a video that gives instructions to your students, have them maybe watch a, a YouTube video or look at an image before responding. You can see even at art, maybe you're going to show a picture, or maybe even for setting, you're going to show a picture and have students respond based on the image. So um, yeah, you can choose here. And then you could also attach maybe a Google Doc or something like that. So if you want to provide a document to get them thinking about it before responding, um, these are great options. Okay, and then you can see some of the video features here. Um, the main one I like to look at is the students to student replies. Depending on the assignment, you may or may not want students leaving each other feedback. Um, it's really great, especially when you give them sentence stems and some structure. And then you can choose if you want these to be um, like I said here, links to be public, visible to all, or private only to you. So you can choose one of those here. The reactions allow students to react to each other, almost like social media. So all of this is in the teacher's control. You just kind of have to read through these. And then feedback. Um, so you'll choose your feedback, provide basic feedback on responses um, based on student verbalization and clarity of expressed ideas. Um, but then you can customize your feedback and add criteria, which makes grading and giving feedback really nice. Once you're finished, you're going to choose create topic. You'll notice that if students are already in your class, you'll see the topic automatically. But if you want to send the link directly to this assignment or this question, you could put this in Moodle or Google Classroom. So that's an overview of how to put in an assignment. Um, when I go to activity, you can kind of see what's been going on in my classes. When I go to my grids, I can see the topics that I have in. 
Spanish recordings, and then you'll see the different student responses when you click here. No one's responded at this point. Let your mind run wild on how to use Flipgrid in the classroom. There's a lot of different ways. Um, maybe it's a foreign language and they're going to practice speaking in another language. Um, maybe it's an end of the unit thinking routine or a reflection. Maybe in language arts they're doing a book talk or a book discussion. Maybe students are explaining their math solution or how they got to that solution. Um, maybe it's for school culture. There are so many different ways that you could use Flipgrid.